Welcome. Today we're going to discuss memcached, both the DDoS attacks and some interesting countermeasure activity that we've been experimenting with at Carrero. Memcached has been used in attacks for a while, but most recently, in the past week or two, it's made the news in terms of terabit level attacks. There's excellent information available about memcached, including perhaps the seminal paper at the Power of Community conference last year referenced on this slide. It's an excellent backgrounder if you want more details. Um, it's also likely that there are many copycat attackers or booter stressor services using this vector today following the publicity and success of the DDoS attacks in the recent weeks. However, the number of vulnerable services is, dim servers is diminishing due to the publicity of the exploit and uh, the responsible actions of many to take them offline or protect them appropriately with the correct configuration. Let's take a look at how memcached reflection amplification occurs. We have the internet, of course, and in, in that field of view, we've scanned for many vulnerable memcached servers. And these are often referred to using a list on showdown.io, searching for the port uh, 11211. These servers have been out there for a while. Uh, often many of them are there by accident due to default configurations of the various Linux or Windows systems or due to um, other errors that have not been identified or been corrected in the past uh, mainly probably through lack of priority on part of the owners of those systems and services but uh, it looks pretty sh sure that a lot of it is just by accident so along comes an attacker and takes advantage of this resource the first thing they're going to do is scan the internet just like Shodan IO does for providing information looking for anybody responding TCP or UDP on port 11211 and build a list of IPs of those systems that are responding on this port and therefore potentially vulnerable. For DDoS we need them to be exposing the UDP version of the memcached service. The attacker will then take that list and preload items as attack payloads. They're using the uh, biggest slab in the default memcached uh, configuration which allows them to load just under a megabyte of data and often uh, in the highly publicized attacks they're using a simple key name A. So we've seen A, B, C, D, E, F, we've seen a variety of other um, key names used by potentially different attackers. Once those payloads are pre-staged in all of the available vulnerable memcached servers that the attacker identified in the original scanning list then the attacker is ready to attack. So they need to choose their victim IP, either one that they themselves want to attack or one that one of their dark web services, boot stressor services, is offering to attack on behalf of somebody else in for, the pay for payment. Then they launch the attack, issuing commands to their list of preloaded servers, asking them for the one megabyte payload in this particular example, but spoofing the source address with that of the victim so that the responses and the data is sent to the victim, not back to the attacker. This continues as the attack builds up. We estimate that you only need to send four or five requests to a memcached server per second in order to get it to unload its full attack potential. This is often referred to as the amplification factor, very efficient method of attacking. When all of the servers are being hit every few seconds or multiple times a second in fact, um, you can get these amplification factors. You can, you can request one download of the payload with get A, but you quite equally ask for get A, 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 A in one command and the memcached server will send you multiple copies of the same attack payload to, of course, the spoofed victim IP. So customers of Carrero who observed these memcached attacks had zero day protection with the smart wall threat defense system and those packets were blocked immediately upon arrival and prevented from entering their protected networks. However, the attacks are very large and what we discovered at Carrero is that it's possible for a vulnerable server to respond to that attacking payload. So you're receiving multiple large attack payloads. You can uh, send a simple memcached command, flush all, back to the originating attacking server, invalidating its cache and making the payload useless until it's reloaded by the attacker, defeating the current attack. So you can progress through the attack SIP list just responding with a single flush all command. Once it reaches successfully reaches the uh, memcached server, 
the attack payload is invalidated and not available uh, for use in response to the get a command and so the attack diminishes greatly. In terms of the countermeasure details, um, this is public available information in the memcached spec and any exposed server is offering this service to the internet. So it could provide ability to rapidly diminish these terabit style attacks as well, or long duration attacks. Uh, the Carrera product can detect in seconds and generates an evolving top SIP list. The countermeasure can begin immediately with no collateral damage. Uh, you're just invalidating the data. Um, can be reloaded, of course, by the attacker, or any good data can be reloaded by the application that's genuinely using the server, but of course should not be exposed to the internet, um, pr as that presents a data leakage problem. And a separate communication, Carrero, describes the discovery that these same memcached servers are in fact exposing customer data to the internet in some cases. The packet rate uh, sent back to the servers is minimal. It's just, it's fact, it benefits from the reverse of the amplification. You only need one packet back to any individual SIP uh, to flush, to flush inv or invalidate the cache. Packet generation is trivial. A couple of, of, of uh, you know, homework examples here. Um, basically, generating a single UDP packet to the memcache UDP port with a flush under all command in it. So the conclusion, uh, countermeasure appears to uh, be successful uh, on stopping a live server from attacking. Um, there's also possibility of preemptive maintenance uh, if you're being attacked from a set of servers or a server is being particularly um, uh, malicious, then um, sending this packet uh, in between times when it's loaded by the attacker with a payload will result in the server being um, rendered useless for that period of time. And in terms of ethical considerations with active defense, uh, there doesn't appear to be any uh, collateral damage um, or benign uh, behavior from this uh, using this action. Uh, the server's there, it's exposing its interface in the same way it will download data upon uh, request, it will also uh, invalidate data upon request. Thank you.